How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thank you. It's nice to meet you. Nice meeting you. I appreciate your uh, making the time. You're doing a lot of uh, interviews leading up to the, the premiere. Uh-huh. Yeah. So yeah. Where, which, uh, which uh, site are you on or which, what are you doing the interview for now? Sure, sure, sure. It's, a, it's sort of an interview format podcast and I've been doing, I've been doing it for some time. Um, right. You know, I'd say the, the majority of guests are filmmakers, but I, I bring on anybody kind of with a stake in a, <laughs> you know, in the game. And most, most, most of the uh, films that we discuss are, or filmmakers projects are tend to be independent films or festival type films or personal type of, you know what I'm saying? So. Well, that's good. I mean, we really need those uh, so that, you know, there is an alternative and there is people talking about, you know, these different kinds of films. Yeah, choice, right? Yeah, yes, absolutely. I know I was having this very conversation, uh, Wayne, um, because people are like, well, you know, I was saying how I, I, I'm now looking at, fe I'm watching festivals online and, you know, people are, and then somebody, the person I was talking to said, yeah, well, people can find, now it doesn't matter geographically where you are, you can, if you're in San Francisco, you can attend the New York Film Festival without <laughs> having to yeah. fly to New York. And, but I'm like, yeah, I guess, but for the majority of people, they still don't know where to begin or the, the whole idea of festival films, films that nobody knows about, <laughs> you know? And it yeah, sort of just... And being uh, able to find them somewhere, you know, uh, yeah. it's not easy. You know, we used to have Criterion, Criterion kind of lost its streaming service. There's a new one, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a little different. Uh, sometimes yeah. it's a little hard to find because I was, I was I'm, I'm very interested in a lot of Japanese films. There's a, there's oh, a director who, who works a lot with, with women uh, material and Naruse. Uh, I was trying to find whether I could download something on that, but no, I have to buy it, you know, uh, I see. the DVD. Anyway, right. so it's not yeah. easy. Right, so it's not easy for Wayne Wang, let alone average average Joe. Yeah. So, <laughs> so anyway, so, so I guess what we, pr we try to do is to create, you know, some people like myself who are doing a lot of the legwork and then we say, okay, on October 23rd, there is this very special, powerful film coming out by the, this, the director, Wayne Wang, called Coming Home Again. And mm -hmm. it's very beautiful and uh, powerful. And it's going to make you, as a, as a, as a viewer... It's gonna leave. It's gonna leave you with a sa satisfied appetite, and it'll stay with you. And you'll be thinking about the film, and you'll feel. Well, you'll feel. <laughs> yeah, good. So, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, you think a lot about your mother and her cooking, and That's right. how you love her, but also uh, sometimes frustrated with her, and also you'll think a lot about. The transients, the trans, you know, how, how life is not permanent. It just comes and goes and you have... Mana no aware. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah, um, I, 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 I had an interesting... Maybe you can, you can respond to what I'm going to say here because my mother has dementia. She's very, very advanced. I, you know, I bring it up on occasion. Uh, uh, in my conversations when it's, you know, pertinent. And I, I, you know, Wayne, I had such a complicated relationship with her when she was healthy and when she could communicate and, and I would hold on to past grievances or resentments for her not being perfect. And, and, and then when all of a sudden she was helpless, immediately all of those feelings vanished and then I was thinking, well, if they could just vanish in a heartbeat like that, why couldn't I let them go before? So, you, yeah. <laughs> you know, we're very complicated people. I mean, animals. Yeah. You know? uh, exactly. And, you know, and, your, and our relationship with our parents, whether it's father or mother, always are, are, are more, one, more than one dimension. It's not just emotional and, and, and loving. There's also this other side to it. 
And, and you know, most of the time, uh, films don't really deal with that. Um, I think it's important to deal with that. I mean, I had the same thing with my mother. Um, and when she got started getting sick and weak, I, I finally found a way to kind of communicate with her, which is we just go out to the courtyard and sit in silence. Because mm -hmm. the more we talk, the more we get into trouble. And then True. all my frustrations would come up again. But in the silence, there was something, you know, more, more calming and communicative and not, not, you know, about sort of fighting about something, you know? Mm -hmm. So in a, in a way, it's like you say, in a one second, you know, it can be gone. So why don't you take advantage of it and try to do it? You know, in my case, she was still uh, at least, you know, conscious and, 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 and alive. So anyway when was this period of time with your mother by the way like roughly chronologically when was roughly, that roughly six or seven years ago you know mm -hmm. it was yeah but it's interesting because your film which is again called coming home again was based on this short story or excuse me not a short story an essay by uh chang ray lee yeah in, in 1995 yes that was now, written, it was biographical, you know, Chang Ray wrote it probably yes. as his first sort of serious piece that he wrote, and it was published in the New Yorker. Um, mm -hmm. And I read it probably in the late 90s or even the early 2000s when I was working with him on, on something else. It, I kind of shelved it away for a while. It 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 emotionally kind of hit me, but I'm, okay. I shelved it away. But then when my mother passed away, it, that short story came back and I was thinking about it a lot. And then I, my, my producer, Don Young, uh, was saying that his grandmother just passed away and there was an apartment three blocks away from where I live. Oh, right. A yeah. lot of the history and the spirit of the place is still there. He says, you should go look at it. And I went there and a lot of things came up, you know, about my mother, about the short story. And we just, and I just said, well, I don't care how much money we have. Let's have a small crew and make a movie about this. So that's how it all happened. You were, I know I read in your, in the production notes uh, that the, you were, when you were making Hollywood films, uh, more yeah. of your, you know, time was spent in the, with bigger budgeted Hollywood films around the time of Joy Luck Club, et cetera, that you started having health problems. You said, I'm wondering how this, how this was for you. Obviously it sounds like spiritually a very positive experience making the film. I'm not discounting possible emotional difficulties doing it, but how was it for you psychologically, uh, physically, et cetera? Well, you know, towards the last part of making the studio films, you know, I, I was, I wasn't seriously ill or anything, but I was always kind of tired. I have headaches. I, right. I just wasn't well. I wasn't physically, you know, uh, 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 good. I uh, went to the doctor. Doctor said I'm just not breathing right. Uh, and it's probably because of the stress, because of my personality, which is always kind of anxious. Um, so anyway, I when I did this film, uh, you know, I've, it's been a few years since I've worked on a studio film. I just it was very relaxing, you know, because in a way I could go to the set and we start rehearsing with the actors and I find that there was a problem with the script. Uh, or there was a problem with the dressing on the set. Um, I would say, let's discuss it. Let's take two hours if we need to, three hours if we need to. If we don't want to shoot today, we can do that, you know? And I wasn't under the stress, like in a studio film, I remember on, on Made in Manhattan, we had sometimes very emotional scenes, which the actors took a while to kind of gear up to, towards. And, and we were already on our third penalty, a meal penalty, what they call. So you have a crew of more than 200 people and each person was, was uh, given a penalty of, of $100 every time. So it adds up to like thousands and thousands of dollars if you don't stop shooting. 
and, and eat your meal. So anyway, uh, that, those are the kinds of stress that's that I yeah. don't need. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can imagine. But the pressure is right. I mean, and I. Well, let me just ask it rather than suggest the answer. Okay. But the, the pressure is for you as a filmmaker, right, to keep it keep growing, right? The 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 projects keep getting bigger, right? But yeah, you know, it 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 always is that if you if you could take the pressure, you could take the stress, and the film becomes successful, and then they 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 give you something else. You can't get away from it. That's sort of what I what happened to me with a string of two or three films. They were all pretty successful, and I I ended up just kind of doing one after another until until I did Last Holiday, and it was. It was a long, long shoot in Kalavari, which is uh, really cold in the winter. And we were shooting there and everyone got sick. And I didn't get sick until the end. And I got really sick. I got, I got pneumonia from shooting that film. Oh, wow. That was, a, that was a lesson to me to say, you know, you can't do this anymore. You know, just, just you know, relax, do something else or do something where um, the stress isn't, isn't that way. I mean, the, the stress was also related to Paramount Studio at that time was changing administration and people were changing. People didn't, didn't uh, want to do the film to begin with. So there were all these different kinds of things that were pulling at us. Mm. The, other, the other, you know, uh, a uh, great story about all that was uh, I, I, I used a great music composer. His name is George Fenton. He's done a lot of great films. And then uh, even before he wrote one note of music, they fired him. You know, they said, they said, oh, you know, the, the temporary music we were using for the previews were not good enough. And I go, that's temp music, you know? Why are you firing a guy before he even starts writing a note of music? He was nice enough to come on early to sort of learn about, you know, how, how we're editing the film, how we're working towards something. Anyway, that's sort of the, 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 um, the uh, difficulties of, of some of the bigger projects. But yeah. then at the same time, you get other rewards, so. Sure, sure. Right. Well, I mean, um, go ahead. Well, for somebody like myself, I'll find a Wayne Wang film regardless of the budget. So I'm glad to see that I was really excited for the opportunity to see the film and, and then to potentially talk with you and, um, you know, have this very conversation. So, <laughs> so how much of the character and, and he kept his name, I, I'm trying to remember uh -huh. Chang Ray uh, in the, in the film, does the, the the central character, the man whose mother is who's dying, he's taking care of her, and well, it, it yeah. it's a sort of takes course over this of a, pretty much a single day where he's yeah. there, and uh, she's stubborn about her independence, and this is something very typical many people go through. But how much is uh, how much is of this character is on that written page in that New Yorker article from way back, and how much of this is all, is kind of also an amalgam of that guy and you? Well, first of all, it was the, the short story was very much uh, biographical. I think he was pretty true to himself, even when he wrote it. Uh, I'm sure there is some embellishment in there, but he, he wrote it pretty much, you know, uh, uh, according to his own character. When mm -hmm. I came in, I really respected a lot of it. Um, I, the only thing I, you know, I asked him to help me with all the dialogue scenes, which most of them came from the short story, but there were, there were other ones that we kind of created also. And there were other scenes that we created. For example, I asked him, you know, what was also going on during this period that's not in the short story. So he said, oh, you know, the, the, the Koreans are very religious and the, and the church groups would always come around bringing food and, and, mm. and talk to you. Uh, so that scene was created and we found some real church people, uh, Korean church people to come and do the film and they were nice enough to just be themselves. So there are different things that we embellish, but the, towards the ending of the film, you know, the, the, the dinner itself, 
uh, in the short story was very poetic and kind of accepting of, mm -hmm. Mm. of the mother dying and, and very uh, more relaxed. Whereas I pushed the conflict between the mother and the son more and had a little more drama to it. Um, because otherwise we all felt, and the, the, the actors were kind of feeling this too, but it, it would be too flat maybe. So mm -hmm. we, we really worked on the ending in a different way and really embellished it. Yeah. And, and, uh, and Chen Ray would, came along uh, with the ride too. I mean, he was gone while we were shooting, but by the, by the end of the shoot, oh. we shot it in sequence. He came on and he, we had the discussion and he helped us write those later scenes too. Yeah, there's also a, 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 a sister. It's it's a it's a very interesting dynamic that happens, right? Mm -hmm. um, one 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 preoccupies themselves, uh, so you don't have to, uh, you know, sometimes deal directly with some of the painful aspects of losing your your parent or somebody you love. So she immediately wants to seek uh, w uh, solutions and uh, right and and get her their mother into uh, some sort of better care and uh, to take care of business where where it seems like the brother is more accepting and trying to honor the his mother's uh, yeah. decision to uh, to die at home I, I you know right before I, I I shot the film I was reading a book by a by a doctor called Atu Gawandi who wrote about his own father you know, having gone through operations and chemo, decided that he wanted to, to, to kind of end his life in a more natural way rather than, you know, more medical and more chemicals and, and you know, dealing with all that. So, the, the, and there are two schools of thoughts these days. You know, there are, there's one school where you kind of do your best to, 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 to medically treat whatever you have and then and then at a certain point, you relax and just let you live out your life uh, in, a, in a more comfortable way. So I, I was go kind of going through those, those uh, two poles of things. And I, I used the sister to kind of push for a more uh, medical you know, solution still because she says, oh, there are all these new treatments you can use. Um, you know, cell replication or whatever, all these things people are using these days. And uh, so anyway, I, I, I use that to kind of, again, create a little more conflict for the film. And I think that's what something all of us have to deal with now is that if we get to a point where, where, we, where we need a lot of medical attention, do we keep going through that? Or do we just say, stop, that's enough, you know, uh, uh, I want to be kind of in a more, more I want to go home. I want to relax and just live my life out. It's a very personal choice, I guess. <laughs> isn't yes, it? It is. Isn't it? It yeah. Is. Yeah. Well, again, the name of the movie is called Coming Home Again, and it will be on virtual cinemas on the 23rd of October, which is coming right up. I know Do producer Donald is in the background, uh, uh, silent. Uh, I, I'm mute, but I'm, I'm just wondering, is it in addition, is it just on virtual cinemas as, as of October 23rd, or will it be on any streaming platforms, or is that like phase two of the... I think there are some theaters that are showing it. Let yeah, me, like Angelica in New York. <laughs> hey, Donald, like, can you hear us? Yeah, we're still trying to figure that out in terms of sure. streaming and, and next no problem. steps. Yeah. Well, it's nice that we have the the this uh, virtual theatrical opportunity for the film, you know, and and it's an opportunity for 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 movie lovers to support their local arts house cinemas as well, like like uh, the Angelica. It's a chain, but it still sh it shows particular types of films which a lot of the bigger chains don't show, like right. coming home again potentially. Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard for any theater these days, but for yes so-called independent art house theaters, it's it's really difficult. So it's a chance for people to go support that and, and see it on a big screen where, you know, it, it, the, it, you, your eyes can kind of wander a little bit and find things in, within the frame because it doesn't cut all the time and cut away <laughs> really fast. So anyway. I, another benefit of working on, on this size project, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah.
again, I think it's more nourishing, frankly, and gives people less of, <laughs> I don't know, I think you come out feeling a little more just uh, in a state of more peaceful state, let's put it that way. Yeah, more or, thoughtful. Or accepting, uh, accepting of the yes. yeah. Of, yeah, of the transients of life, so to speak. And also, you know, you you if you watch carefully, you learn to cook three Korean dishes. Well, we there you go. The test everyone who's seen the film. You should be able to pick up, you know, there's every ingredient that's used, how it's cut and prepared, and you know, they're 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 very homey type dishes, so they're not fancy restaurant dishes so but they're really tasteful i think i saw some glass glass noodles right yes. uh, one, yeah that was a chair, which is a glass noodle dish which is quite easy to make and you can you can you can use different kinds of ingredients with it you know vegetables meat uh, yep. or just vegetables and glass noodles uh, are, are wonderful so if you're out there and you're listening for Pete's sake, bonus <laughs> bonus content built right into the film, no extra yeah. cost. Yeah. <laughs> and we're all cooking at home quite a bit now anyway. So I know, it's... yeah, that's right. So you, <laughs> you run out of ideas, go see this film. You have three dishes you can try out. One yeah. is a fish dish, one is a glass noodle dish, and one is a, is a short rib uh, one. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Glad you brought that. Buy from a Korean uh, or Asian market. <laughs> I, I, you know, I know we're going to have to wind down here to respect yeah. your time. I know you've got probably a bunch more of these things to do today, but I, I think we're going to have to have a part two at some point because, and maybe we can do that after you're done with uh, this particular project. So you'll have some time because one of the things I know that came up in my reading about your making the film is the representation of uh, Asian uh, Asians and, uh, and Asian Americans in, in popular film or in film in general. And uh, it's also been now, is it 25 years since Joy Luck Club or 30? Yeah, yeah. 25. I don't know. It's a, yeah. More than 25, a little more than 25. Yeah, because we just had there, a celebration at the uh, Academy uh, on the Joy Luck Club. It was 25 at that time. I remember uh, reading the book on a flight. Uh, it was near the end of it. I left it on the plane. I had to buy a second copy in Europe somewhere, try to find an American version of a second copy because I, I was so close to finishing it. <laughs> so that's my memory of, but I, you know, of reading the book anyway. Which, But we'll have to do that part two because also uh, I, I feel like you know, the Asian American is sort of the last ethnic group that's, uh, that's fairly represented, I think, or is, it seems like... Um, yeah, there's a lot of push these days with Black American cinema, but still not quite enough. I, at least from my perspective about Asian American films, you know, there's there's crazy rich for for twenty some years after Joyla Club, almost nothing happened, and then you know, yeah. uh, Crazy Rich Asians, Farewell, and some romantic comedies came up uh, by Netflix and. You know, I still feel that they're kind of in a certain mode um, that doesn't quite get 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 deeper enough into the complications and the contradictions, uh, the, the 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 you know the love and hate of all everything in in, sure. in that culture. So anyway, I love to talk more about that. So we'll do a second part. Thank you. Yeah, that'd be great. And Donald. Uh, one more thing. Uh, so where do people go just so we make sure people can find which are, I know Angelica, I saw that caught my eye and immediately remember because I'm from New York City. So I, I know that's one of the virtual cinemas, but where can people go to get more details and buy tickets? Yeah, go to Outsider Pictures, our distributor. They have a list of all of the virtual screenings and releases that'll be coming out this week. Thank you. Uh, we'll we'll put the links up on the podcast to make sure that uh, people know where to look. Also, we'll we'll just make that available. Um, thank you so much, Wayne. Well, thank you, Adam. Good talking to you. Same here. All right. Good. Best of luck with the film. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Adam, for your time. I'm glad this all worked out. So. Oh yeah, you. it's it's great. It came out great. He's terrific. Okay. So, all right. Have a good day. Bye. All right. You too. All right. Bye, bye, guys. Bye. bye.